Hello everyone and welcome to Las Vegas. Randy Urban here with you for Raptors today. The Raptors of course fall to the Utah Jazz 86-76. Uh, it was a good start for the Raptors, but then things started to unravel in that second quarter. And despite a late push in the fourth, they really, really weren't able to get over the hump. And then, of course, offensively, things were a little bit tougher with Grady Dick and Jonathan Mobo both missing the game with injuries. If you didn't get a chance to watch it live, check out the highlights. Jamal Shedd, second round pick out of Houston. We saw him so much in college. He has a game ready for the NBA. He's got a dog in him, man. I mean, he's got he's one of the best on-ball defenders, one of the best leaders in college basketball. He's a winning player that has a toughness about him that really impacts everyone in your locker room. There you go. First one to touch the ball. That's Toronto get the opening possession. The lane opens up as Javon Freeman Liberty out of DePaul as the first bucket. Three early turnovers for the Utah Jazz. This is what Carlson could do. Brandon Carlson, the seven-footer out of Utah. He is the all-time leader in blocks, games played, and fifth in scoring. Jazz have some spots open. They've got one more two-way that they're looking to give out, so they're trying to see who's going to impress the rest of the summer. Really good job. Running in the floor, Freeman Liberty, Liberty and an early timeout as Toronto, a 7-0 lead to start. How about the, the, the NBA game in general, obviously, the game you played, uh -huh. is a whole lot different. Yeah. I'm not sure how many guys would still be on the court. Sean Justice out of Santa Clara coming the other way, and Hendricks, the former lottery pick out of UCF. They're looking for him to take the next step this summer with Utah. Listen, listen. It's unbelievable. My very first summer league was actually in Salt Lake City at their summer league, and I was sitting courtside, and a ball hit me in the face, and the guy sat next to me said, you always got to keep your head on a swivel, so... Extra pass, one more into the corner. Taylor Hendricks. And Williams with just a ball never hit the ground. It's dribble penetration, what does that do? Puts the defense in rotation. What does that do? Gives you angles to get to the glass. Extra pass in the corner, the assist by Abaji to Freeman Liberty. <laughs> okay, uh, up top. Oh, really nice pass. Kendra, there's just so much value with the G League. Absolutely, and as you guys said, it's so close to their facilities in Salt Lake City. And towards the first half of last season, that's where Hendrickson spent. Haven't been able to give him any looks offensively. Got his man in the air, and Carlson will finish in one. Nice job of Carlson running the full Quincy Gary A. Oh, here we go. It's nothing personal. <laughs> Filipowski splits the D, a monster slam. Look out, look, this is the, look how much fun Filipowski's having. So now if you're the Jazz, what do you look for? You got oh, they got another steal. Here's Jamal Shedd, and it's a 9-0 run, and we got a game again. I would not bring the ball up against Jamal Shedd, I can tell you that much. A six-point game. As we approach two minutes to nice. play, and a high flyer, Tavion Kinsey. Up top, Abaji showing off the hops. Special situation, just working on something. Flat screen, boom. Small shed at the horn. Good play, though. It's the Utah Jazz picking up their second win here in Las Vegas with an 86-76 win over Toronto. Taylor Hendricks was the star of the show for Utah. It's terrific. Uh, and he scored so many different ways. You know he's going to defend. You know he's going to rebound. But he was really confident and purposeful and efficient offensively. Lots of good stuff offensively from Javon Freeman Liberty there. Team high, 24 points. But also DJ Carton came in with 22 minutes, six points, four rebounds, two assists. He's actually played well all summer league, and he spoke after the game. DJ, just how did the game plan change offensively for you with, with Grady not in the game? Yeah, I mean, Grady's a you know, big part of our offense, just bringing scoring, bringing energy on that side of the ball. So, um, I mean, as you can see in that first half, we got a little stagnant and, you know, kind of got uh, loose with the ball there and kind of lightheaded we didn't really know what to do with it so we just got to be more assertive on offense and know that you know when we lose a guy like that some guys are gonna have to step up and um, you know play different roles and you know be that aggressor and because our team needs that our team needs a guy like Grady a guy getting downhill doing other things around the ball off the ball and stuff like that so you could definitely tell that we missed him today but um, we need other guys you know step up and 
and perform in that moment. It was a promising start. You guys looked really good early on that first quarter. What, what sort of began to unravel there late first, early second? Yeah, I think really um, it was just being composed. I think, you know, getting back to what uh, coach was trying to get us to run, just getting on our sets and um, slowing down and getting in offense. I think, you know, um, a lot of these guys, have, some of them haven't played, you know, yet. And um, it's really just getting comfortable, getting comfortable playing with each other. You could tell that, you know, we hadn't really played with each other and we were kind of just looking confused out there and not on the same page and stuff. So it's really just, you know, being having that open communication with each other and um, being on the same page. And then um, going from there, just everybody has to have an aggressive mindset and, um, you know, have to have, have the will to win. So and for you personally, your game, where have you seen the biggest progressions here from, from game one and summer league to game three? Um, for, for me, uh, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, bring the energy on the defensive end. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, set the tone and, um, and just bring broad ball pressure. I think that's one emphasis that, you know, that the team has really put on for us this uh, summer league is just ball pressure, especially for me. And so I'm just trying to set the tone with that and then um, get other guys involved, um, get downhill and make plays. Uh, you know, I, I think I need to, uh, you know, be a little cleaner on that side of the ball. But, you know, I feel like just as long as I keep bringing on the defensive end, it's going to carry over into the offense and um, hopefully give my guys some energy and me, me and myself. The Raptors fall to the Utah Jazz, 86-76. They're now 2-1 in their schedule. No Grady Dick, no Jonathan Mobo. So head coach Jama Malalela had to make some adjustments. Let's hear from him after the game. Jama, with, uh, with Mobo and, and Grady Dick not playing today, uh, what were some of the adjustments you had to make for, for them offensively? Yeah, I think one with Grady not being able to play today, uh, it really gave Jacoby a chance to be more in that ball handling position and handle the ball more. So that was good for him to see him sort of uh, be in that situation. Obviously, he got more threes up. He's got to work on making those threes, but really good for Jacoby. And then I think with Jonathan, it gave Dylan a chance. I thought Dylan played good minutes for us today. You saw his ability to shoot the three uh, and then continue working his defense. Did you like the looks overall, or was Utah doing something that kind of thwarted what you were trying to do offensively? Yeah, so I thought Utah did a great job. They're switching one through five, and I think for us, it was a good learning game to figure out what does that look like? How do we sort of play offense versus that switching one through five? finding the cutting, finding the next actions. That's where we weren't great today, but that's obviously we watch the film and get better at it next game. Uh, J Javon Freeman Liberty stepped up again offensively. Same thing as last time when, when those guys went down. We know he can score, but what are some of the progressions that you're seeing from him? Yeah, I think for Javon, it's obviously as a proven scorer. It's what does he do with more size, and Utah brought that to the table with bigger players uh, as he got to the paint. So it's him learning, can he make the finish or make the kick out? And it's just that decision. It's a very subtle decision of when he can pass, uh, when he can finish, and that he got some good chances of that today. What are you seeing from Shamshe? I thought probably his best game. Yeah, really impressed. I think Ulrich is uh, someone who plays super hard every possession. That's really great to see. Uh, and today you saw him r running to the rim, setting screens. We've kind of been, been trying to refine his pick and roll coverage a little bit. Uh, so he's working on that. He's such an active, active learner, always trying to do the right thing every possession. Okay, always enlightening stuff from head coach Jama Malalela. But now it's time to return your attention to Akil Augustine, who caught up with some old friends here at Summer League. Basketball fans, Akil Augustine coming to you from Thomas and Mac in the Cox Pavilion, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm talking to random strangers inside the arena, getting their take and perspective on Toronto Raptors history. And I ran into these two guys. Uh, what's your name and where are you from? We'll start over here. Uh, Alex Wong from Toronto, longtime Raptors fan. Okay, I believe you. I believe you. And what's your name, sir? Uh, Jerome Chang, big fan. Uh, big fan of NBA TV Canada. Okay, all right. Well, okay, familiar. All right, I like it. Let's jump right into it. Greatest Raptors play of all time. Greatest Raptors play of all time, man. I got to go with Kawhi. Kawhi's shot is one, but I'm going with Pascal's shot over Draymond Green to clinch the finals. Ooh. Okay. okay, why, why? Because we won the championship. Okay. All right, strong argument. <laughs> okay, now your turn. You go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with the Mo Peterson buzzer beater. Shouts out to Michael Ruffin. Yes, yes. Okay, and, and why do you pick that one? Uh, because no one should have had an opportunity to make that shot. And I don't know, there's something about just like throwing it up in the air and like thinking the game is over, very and one style, hot sauce crossing someone over, and then losing the game. It's beautiful. <laughs> all right, um, next question, greatest Raptors dunk of all time. Greatest Raptor dunk, pick any of the Vince Carter. Vince Carter between the legs from T-Mac at the dunk contest. I can't argue, you? I mean, first, the 360 windmill is better than that already, but I'm going to go with a classic Vince Carter, like, reverse 360 Statue of Liberty. Yeah. It's, it's hard to argue with that. My personal favorite, though, uh, and, and this is only because I'm not going to use yeah. Vince, okay. I'm going James Johnson, Detroit, on oh, Andre Drevin, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
cock yeah. that joint back and banged it on. Can I do a bonus one? Yeah, bonus one. Go. Serge Ibaka uh, alley up to Matt Thomas during the 15 game <laughs> win streak. Look that up. I know you guys have the footage. I know you guys have the footage. Make an intern find that one. That is the most random answer ever, which is the perfect segue to my next question. Can you name me an absolutely random Toronto Raptor? Uh, we, I was just talking about with, uh, I don't, is it random? I'm just going to say Jean Tabac. Okay, that's safe. That's safe, right? Yeah, that's yeah. safe, yeah. Random. First year, look him up. Now over here. Rod Strickland. Make you jump like Rod Strickland. Okay, I like that one. He, okay. he like closed out one of those seasons with the Raptors, I think, like late in his career type. Tell an intern to fact check that, though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for your interns, honestly. I am the intern. <laughs> Here's a big one, though. Okay. Greatest Raptors fit in game all time. And you're allowed to use, like, the Andrea Bargnani Italy, the Garbajosa Spain, yeah. the gold, the Chevron with yeah, the north, yeah. obviously the purple. Where are you going? Yo, bring back the Raptors camo jerseys, man. Let's go. What year was that? I don't know. I'm not the intern here. I'm a fan. <laughs> you ask the questions, I answer them. Somebody get the intern. <laughs> All right. Well, what are we going with over here? I, I, I know I, we're seeing a lot of purple bean teas, but give me a little blue. Give me a little Huskies action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Couple of vets, couple of OGs in the game. Yeah, Coming with that just means we're old. Yeah, my answers were terrible. God damn. <laughs> All right, that does it for us here on Raptors today from Las Vegas Summer League. Next game for the Raptors, Friday against the Miami Heat. Tip-off at 6 p.m. local time. That's 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching another edition of Raptors Today, and we'll see you next time.